Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. I hope you all are fine and in the best conditions of your health. So for the course of organic reaction mechanism, today we shall continue with our topic selectivity in organic synthesis, right? So this is part of uh, this continuation of the previous lecture of this topic. So key concepts will be, we'll discuss about the selectivity, specificity and different type of selectivities as well. Right, so selectivity as we discussed in the previous lecture, it is a preference. It's preference of the reagent to attack on one of the two substrates or on one of the two positions in preference, right? So if a reaction preferentially occurs at one site or one functional group or one stereoisomer, then this is called the selectivity. So whenever there is a selectivity, then you get two products or more than two products in different amounts. It's important to note that if you get two products in equal amount, that it means that there is no selectivity at all, right? So whenever there is selectivity, it means that you are getting two products or more than two products in different amounts. And whenever you are getting the two products in exactly same amount, it means that this is not selectivity. Such reactions are said to be non-selective because the reagent is showing preference to both of the substrate or both of the functional group or both of the positions to an equal extent. Right? So in the previous lecture, we saw that selectivity is of three types. So selectivity is chemoselectivity, which means that it is the preference of the reagent for one functional group over another. So selectivity means, chemoselectivity means which of the two function groups will react in preference, right? Reagent is related to the position of attack. It means that the reagent will prefer which of the two possible positions. Right, so reagent is the preference of a reagent to attack preferentially on one position or on one side of action rather than the other. While the reagent is preference of the reagent to attack one of the stereoisomers or it is the preference of a reagent to attack with or react with the stereoisomer in a specific way right so whether this is the manner in which the reagent is attacking or it is the preference of the reagent for a certain stereoisomer so both of these will belong to the category of stereo selectivity the chemoselectivity we saw that its ability of reagent or we also saw that its ability of the intermediate to react with one function group in preference to another. So we saw uh, different examples of chemoselectivity. We saw about the chemoselective reduction of different functional groups. We saw about chemoselective oxidation. We saw about chemoselective acylation. We saw about chemoselective epoxidation and many more reactions in the previous lecture. So we also saw that the chemoselectivity can occur under three conditions. The first condition was when the two function groups were of unequal reactivity, then the reagent preferred the function group that had greater reactivity. The second condition was that uh, the reaction involving two function groups and both the function groups were identical. And the third condition was the reactions in which a reactant can react twice but we wanted it to react only once so when such condition arise in which a substrate can react twice but we want it to react only once that in that case the use of concentration wisely is the important factor in that situation you have to use the concentration in a much lesser amount so now we shall discuss about the second type of selectivity which is the regio selectivity so reduced selectivity is preference for one orientation over another in the arrangement of a reaction product or in simple words the reduced selectivity is the preference of a reaction to form one position isomer over another right so you can see it in terms of the orientation of the reaction right so you can see the reactivity reduced selectivity in terms of the reactivity of your reactant or the reduced selectivity in terms of the product right so it can be referred to as the preference of formation of one position isomer over the other or you may say that reduced selectivity is the preference of the reagent to attack preferentially on one side and not prefer the other one here we have another term which is known as regiospecific right 
So reduce specific reactions are those reactions where the same choice isn't there. It means that uh, reduce specific reaction will only result in formation of one product only, right? So uh, either because both uh, sites are available for reaction, but the reaction will only occur at one place. Although there is a choice, but the reagent will not use that choice. It will only result in formation of one product. So whenever there is a case that when only one product is formed, although there is an option for formation of second product, then this is called regiospecific reaction, right? So specificity is involving formation of only one product, while selectivity is formation of two or more than two products, but one of the product is formed as major, right? So when two things are formed in unequal amount, this is called regioselectivity or simple selectivity. When only one product is formed exclusively, then in that case, this is called regiospecificity. While if a reaction results in formation of two products in equal amount, right? So when a reagent has equal preference for both the sites, then such reaction will not be considered as regioselective. Right? So you should have a clear concept in mind about the selectivity, specificity and non-selectivity. Right? The selectivity always comes to an action when two products or more than two products are formed in unequal amount. When the two products or more than two products are formed in equal amount, then such a reaction is said to be non-selective. Right? And when only one product is formed, then in that case, this reaction is a type of specific reaction, right? So when you're talking about the selectivity in terms of position of action or formation of a position isomer or attack of the reagent at a specific position, then this selectivity is called the non-selectivity, non regioselectivity selectivity, regio selectivity or regio specificity, right? So these terms of non-selectivity, selectivity and specificity are the same for both of uh, for all type of selective reactions right so whenever you have two products in equal amount it means that the reaction is non selective so here we are considering different examples so the so real selectivity you know that is preferential reaction of one side over other side of the same function group so we'll see about uh, the different reactions here and uh, let's see how we can see about the reduced selectivity. So here we have the addition of hydrogen bromide on a carbon-carbon double bond. So here we have a carbon-carbon double bond here, right? So both of these carbons are doubly bonded. So bromine can approach here or bromine can approach here, right? So say that this is internal carbon and this is terminal carbon here. So if you want to have a bromine on the terminal carbon here, then you can see that just uh, using your basic organic chemistry concept you might have heard about the symmetrical and unsymmetrical alkene and the addition of unsymmetrical reagent to an unsymmetrical alkene so here you can see that this is styrene and this styrene is an unsymmetrical reagent because if you cut this molecule into half then on one side we have ch2 and the other side we have a benzene and a ch Right. So this is an unsymmetrical reagent here and this hydrogen bromide is also unsymmetrical right so when you're considering the addition of an unsymmetrical reagent to an unsymmetrical alkene you must always keep in mind the rule of the Markovnikov right so you must have this rule of Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov rule in mind so what is Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov rule so according to Markovnikov rule, when an unsymmetrical reagent is added to an unsymmetrical alkene, then positive part of the added reagent, right, this is the positive part of the added reagent, it will always go to the carbon that has maximum number of hydrogen atoms. So here you can see you have two hydrogens here and one hydrogen here. So according to Markovnikov rule, this part should always go here. While if hydrogen goes here, then bromine should definitely go on the other way around here. Right, so bromine should go here on this internal carbon. Right, so here you can see that this bromine is going to the internal carbon and this hydrogen has gone here. Right, so this is following the Markovnikov rule here. So you can 
see that if you want to have a bromine on the internal carbon then you can you should use only simple hydrogen bromide right but if you are preferring to have a bromine on the terminal carbon here right so if you want to have bromine on this carbon here then you have to use the anti markovnikov rule so according to anti markovnikov rule when an unsymmetrical reagent is added to an unsymmetrical alkene right so this is unsymmetrical alkene this is unsymmetrical reagent then if the reaction is carried out in presence of a peroxide in, under such conditions the positive part of the added reagent will go to the carbon that has minimum number of hydrogen atoms right so it means that in order to carry out the anti markovnikov rule you must have a hydrogen peroxide here so carrying out the anti markovnikov reaction in the presence of hydrogen peroxide we can have bromine at the terminal carbon so you can see that we can carry out preferentially a reaction at one position and ignoring the other position and this will result in preferential formation of our desired product right so you must keep this markovnikov rule and anti markovnikov rule in mind next we have another example here right so again we have a carbon carbon double bond here and you can see easily this is carbon carbon double bond is also unsymmetrical here right so we have one hydrogen here and one hydrogen here so there's no hydrogen here but there's a hydrogen here right so this is unsubstituted carbon or this is monosubstituted carbon and this is disubstituted carbon here and what we are interested in we are bringing a hydroxyl group here right so in case if you are interested in bringing the hydroxyl group here you can see here the hydroxyl group if brings here then hydrogen must have gone here right so for this product if you want to have a hydrogen add this carbon and a hydroxyl add this carbon you can see in group the positive part of the reagent is going to the carbon that has minimum number of hydrogen atoms so it means that this product which is being formed so this product is actually the anti markovnikov product right this anti markovnikov product so it's not important that we always uh, use the hydrogen peroxide so in order you want to carry out the anti markovnikov addition of water then in that case you can use this borane in presence of thf so if you are using the simple borane in presence of thf then you can have the anti markovnikov addition of water right so in that case the hydrogen will go to the carbon that has minimum number of carbons while the hydroxyl will go to the carbon that has maximum number of hydrogen atoms right so in case if you are considering uh, the markovnikov product means hydrogen should go here and the hydroxyl will go to the internal carbon so if you want to have hydrogen here and hydroxyl here right as in in this product then the reagent you should use should be the mercuric acetate in presence of sodium borohydride right so see the difference in the reagent so when you are using this reagent then we get the markovnikov addition of the product of water and when you are using simple bh3 then we have we are having the anti markovnikov addition of water on this molecule this is example of free selectivity now again we have another example of free selectivity here we have an phenyl acetylene here right so this is a phenyl acetylene and we want to carry out the hydration so what's the hydration hydration is addition of water so you should remember that whenever you have a triple bond and you carry out the addition of water then either we get an aldehyde or we get a ketone right so we can have an aldehyde or ketone from addition of water on this molecule so it depends that whether the hydroxyl is added on the, this carbon or on that carbon so in this specific case when you have a triple bond here then the substituted end of the triple bond this one this is called the internal carbon while this is called the terminal carbon here right so if the hydroxyl group gets attached to the terminal carbon right if the oh gets attached to the terminal carbon then in that case we get an aldehyde while if the hydroxyl part of the water gets attached to the internal carbon then in that case we get a ketone right so in case if you want to have an aldehyde group like this one then it means that you should have hydroxyl at the terminal carbon right and if you want to get a ketone then you must have 
a hydroxyl group at this internal carbon here, right? So if you want to have a hydroxyl group at this carbon, right? If you want to add a hydroxyl group here, you can see this terminal carbon has a hydrogen here, right? So the negative part is going to the carbon that has maximum number of hydrogen atoms. So this is anti Markovnikov addition. Again, in order to have anti Markovnikov addition, you must have BH3 in presence of DHF and we'll use sodium hydroxide in presence of hydrogen peroxide because we are going for the anti Markovnikov addition, right? But in case if you are considering this uh, product, then you must have a hydroxyl on the internal carbon and a hydrogen on this terminal carbon, right? So here you can see that positive part of water is going to the terminal carbon that has maximum number of hydrogens and the negative part is going on the carbon that has minimum number of hydrogens. So this product is a Markovnikov product, right? So since it's a Markovnikov product, you don't need to make use of the hydrogen peroxide. So the reaction works well when you are using the mercuric sulfate in presence of sulfuric acid, right? So depending on the reagent, you can carry out selectively the hydration on this carbon or hydration on that carbon. Okay. So next we have a uh, bioviligar oxidation. So bioviligar oxidation is a reaction in which if you have a cyclic ketone, then you can convert the cyclic ketone into cyclic ester. So cyclic ester is known as lactone. So if you're interested to convert a cyclic ketone into a cyclic ester, then we use this reagent. This is trifluoroperoxylic acid. This is trifluoroperoxy acid, right? So this oxy acid can insert on this side, or that can insert on that side as well, right? So this hydro, this oxygen can insert on either between this carbon, carbon double, carbon, carbon single bond, right? So oxygen can come here. Or oxygen can come here so if you want to bring oxygen on a more substituted side because this side you can see this is more substituted and this is less substituted so if you are preferring to bring the oxygen on a more substituted side then this reagent is very effective so this trifluoro uh, peroxy acid is very effective to bring the oxygen on a more substituted side right again we have an example of birch reduction. So birch reduction is a method to reduce the benzene into uh, a diene, right? And the diene is not isolated, it's not conjugated diene, this is an isolated diene, right? So if you want to convert a benzene into a diene system, then the reagent that's used is a lithium in presence of ammonia, and the solvent is some protic solvent like ethanol. Right. So when you are using a benzene for birch reduction, then the nature of substituent is very important here. Right. So if you have a methoxy group, then the methoxy group will have the double bond attached directly to the methoxy group here. Right. But in case if you have an electron withdrawing group like carboxylic acid group, then the double bond will be away from the carboxylic acid group here. Right. So the orientation of the double bond is very important, and this orientation is depending on the nature of the substituent, right? So if you have a methoxy group, then methoxy group will prefer the double bond to be directly attached to the methoxy group. While if you have a electron withdrawing group like carboxylic acid group, then such groups will prefer to have the double bond away from them because these are forming an alpha beta unsaturated system, right? So this is forming a conjugated system which is more preferred. While here, in case this is forming a conjugated system if the double bond is directly attached with this one. Right, so if a double bond is present here, system will not become conjugated. But if a double bond is directly attached with this methoxy group, then system will become more conjugated. Similarly, this carboxylic acid group, it is preferring the hydroxyl uh, double bond to be here because in this way it's forming a conjugated system. Right, so here the selectivity of the position of a double bond is not depending on the reagent, it is depending actually on the nature of the substituent. Now we have reduced selectivity for diels alder reaction. So you know the diels alder reaction is basically a, a pericyclic reaction and for that purpose we need to have a diene and a dienophile. And it is important that the diene must have electron donating group and the dienophile must have electron withdrawing group, right? So if an electron donating group is present at the terminal position, like here, then this 
dinophile will prefer to have the dinophile close to this electron withdrawing group right so in that case the product that is formed right so you can have diene like this one or diene in the inverted side as well right you can have this dinophile like this or you can have the dinophile inverted like that one so in case if the diene dinophile has uh, electron withdrawing group and the diene has the electron donating group and the electron donating group is present at the terminal carbon then this dinophile the electron withdrawing group of the dinophile will prefer to have the r group close to it right so this product will be formed major while this product in which the r group is away from the electron withdrawing group that will be formed as a minor product while if the dino uh, if the r group the electron donating group of the diene is away from the terminal position then the dienophile will prefer to have this R group as away as possible right this thing is important in the orientation of the Diels-Alder reaction right so if the di if the electron donating group is present at the terminal position then this dienophile will prefer to have this R group closer to this electron withdrawing group right so this product is forming its major product but if this R group is not present at the terminal position then this electron withdrawing group will prefer to have this R group as away as possible. So you can say that here the orientation is such that both of the groups are at maximum distance. So this group is forming as a major product while this is forming as a minor product. So this is again the example of selectivity. Again here we have an example of the Zalter reaction and now we can see that this is the Zalter reaction here this is dinophile because it has two electron withdrawing groups here and there's intermolecular hydrogen bonding here, right? And here is the diene available here. So diene has electron uh, donating groups attached to it. So diene can approach like this one, or the diene can also approach if the uh, this acetoxy group is present at this position, right? So there, there, there are two possibilities. So this diene can approach like this, so in case if a toxic group is here, just ignore this group, right? So it can react like this or it can react the other way around as it has been written. But the diene will prefer to react like this one. Why? Because there is an extensive possibility of hydrogen bonding here, right? Because of hydrogen bonding, this molecule will be stabilized. So this possibility is not much pronounced at this position, right? So there, in this specific case, the diene will prefer to approach like this one so this is a preference of position so instead of uh, reacting in other position this diene is preferring to react in this position here now we have another possibility right so here we have okay now we have another possibility we have two substituents both electron donating they are attached on this diene, right? So here we have possibility that diene reacts like this, and we have another possibility that the sulfur group is present here and the acetoxy group is present here. So whenever the sulfur is present, it has been observed that this diene prefers to react like this one because this sulfur wants to remain close to this carbonyl group here. So in order to form a product in which this acetoxy group is close to this oxygen, what we do is that we first react with the diene in which there is sulfur present at that position because sulfur will prefer to have this carbonyl close to it. And in the next step, what we do, we remove this sulfur group by use of ren nickel. So the sulfur group reduced, so we get the product in which the acetoxy group is present at position close to this carbonyl group, right? So in this way, we can force the product of our desire. Now we have next is the selective ring opening of the epoxide ring. So this is an epoxide ring. This is a three-membered ring you can see here. And this epoxide is unsymmetrical. Why unsymmetrical? Because on one side we have two methyl groups and on the other side we have a hydrogen and a methyl. So this side is less substituted and this is more substituted. So you can say this is less hindered and this is more hindered. Now when we carry out the reaction in presence of sulfuric acid and methanol, right? So what happens the sulfuric acid will first protonate this oxygen right and like this one and when it will protonate you know that the ring opening of the oxygen will take place so if the ring opening takes place on this side then we will have a carbocation on this carbon so this carbocation is secondary so secondary carbocation is not stable but if the ring opening occurs from this side 
right then carbocation will be formed here right so if carbocation is formed here then this carbocation is tertiary and it's more stable right so that's for the same reason that this carbocation is formed in preference so this carbocation is formed and methoxy will attack here so as a result when you are carrying out the ring opening of epoxide ring in presence of sulfuric acid so we'll have a methoxy group at this carbon because the hydroxyl group is attaching here in order to form a stable carbocation but in case if you are using the ring opening with sodium methoxide so sodium methoxide will directly attack and it will attack on the carbon that is less substituted right so there is no protonation step in the first step so this methoxy group will prefer to attack on the carbon that has uh, less substituent that is less hindered right so for that purpose uh, we can have a methoxy group on this carbon which is less substituted right so by just changing the reaction conditions we can control the selectivity of the position of attack yeah. now we have reduced selectivity and we are considering the aromatic electrophilic substitution reactions right so here you can see that we have a methyl group here and the methyl group you know that it is electron donating with respect to resonance as well as inductive effect so as a result since the uh, system is electron donating so we can have electrophile at or the position or at para position here right so the meta position will not be affected so this product at which the substituent is at meta position so this product will not be found and if it is formed under harsh conditions so it will be formed in very very less amount so this product will be favored while this product will not be favored this is example of regio selectivity now we have another example we have radio craft acylation and this is our substrate which is an alkene here right so now this uh, acyl chloride in presence of uh, aluminium chloride so this is getting out the acylation so the acyl group can uh, it can attack on this carbon as well as it can attack on this carbon however uh, this position will be more preferred so why this is more preferred the reason is the orientation of this chair form of this ring because if the acyl group approaches this carbon that case this carbon becomes more hindered in the cyclic chain right because if it's more hindrance so that's why this product is not formed it's formed in major or minor amount while this product is formed as major amount right here right so this will be sorry this will be a major product uh, this will be formed in major amount and this product will be formed as minor amount because this position at which the acyl group is attached this position is more hindered because of the diaxial interactions right you can just draw the chair form and you can predict the diaxial interaction of the methyl groups and the hydrogen with this acyl group here but in case if you want to make this product although that's forming is a minor product an alternate way is that we firstly bring this trimethyl salyl group here right when we carry out the trimethyl salyl group here and then we carry out reaction with this group what happens that this acyl group will displace this trimethyl salyl group right so this group this acyl group will displace this trimethyl salyl group so although previously that was formed as minor product but since this group will definitely substitute a group under these conditions so we can form this product if it is our desired product right so here the trimethyl salyl group this is called a dummy group why that's called a dummy group because it has no role it just helps in forcing to bring a substituent at a desired position and once the substituent is brought about the desired position this group is easily removed right so that's why this trimethyl salyl group that is acting as a sort of a dummy group here right so next what we have next we have another type of selectivity which is called the stereo selectivity right stereo selectivity means that a reaction which gives two stereo isomers and one of them is major right stereo selectivity can be defined in two ways one way is that it is the preference of formation of one stereo isomer when more than one stereo isomer can be formed other way around it is the 
preference of a reagent to react with selectively one stereoisomer, right? Stereoselectivity can be defined in both ways. It is the selectivity of formation of a stereoisomer or it is the selectivity of one of the stereoisomers to react. So firstly, we will consider about the diastereoselective reaction. So here we can see that this uh, reduction of carbon-carbon triple bond that is resulted in two different products under two different conditions. So if you are considering, if you are uh, converting, preferring to convert this triple bond into a cis uh, alkene, then you have to use hydrogen over palladium with barium sulfate, right? So barium sulfate is actually poisoning this palladium catalyst. So when you are using hydrogen over palladium, uh, which palladium is poisoned, then we get this cis isomer, while the trans isomer is formed in very, very trace amounts, right? So although both are forming, but this is formed as a major product. But if you are preferring to convert this alkyne into a trans alkene, then you have to use the Birch reduction. So Birch reduction involves the use of lithium or sodium in presence of liquid ammonia, and the solvent is a methanolic solvent here, right? So when you use liquid ammonia in presence of methanol as a solvent, then in that case, we get the trans alkene. So depending on whether you are preferring to form a cis alkene or the trans alkenes, you can change the reagent and just uh, when you are using hydrogen or poison palladium then the cis isomer is formed while the using of birch reduction conditions work well for the formation of the trans isomer now we have another example of stereoselective reaction and here we are taking an example of enantioselective reaction so here the enantioselective reaction means the preference of formation of one enantiomer over the another right so here we have this double bond here right and this is mcpda right mcpda is metachlorobenzoic acid this is perbenzoic acid and here we have a metachloro position so this is known as mcpda right so mcpda when it reacts with this uh, double bond it carries out the epoxidation of the ring however this ring can be above the plane like this one or this ring can be below the plane so this mcpba it prefers to bring this epoxide ring above the plane so this stereoisomer this enantiomer will be formed as a major product while this isomer will be formed as a minor product right so we shall stay about we shall discuss about the stereoselectivity in detail in the next coming lecture i hope you have understood this lecture so far uh, to much extent so thanks for your attention. That's all for today.